you're a singer or something now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me read that out. Stand up and up. Let me ask you I got a question. Okay. Are we done yet? <laughs> a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Thank you all you guys for being here. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you all you girls for being here. You guys are going to be around. <laughs> DBS, you know, Honky Tonk will meet you outside. Yep, it's 20 bucks for a picture with us. Jake gets it. Free with him for free. Is it? You can always steal my stuff. <laughs> okay, somebody do something because I just. Anybody? What do you guys want to talk about? How did you feel when you broke your neck with his guitar? I didn't break his neck with my guitar. I just shattered a couple of discs, that's all. You know, I, 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 I actually did call Mick Foley about that because he put it in his book. And I said, Mick, you're a journalist now, right? He says, yeah. I said, you know, a good journalist always checks their sources. I said, who did you check with that said I broke Jake's neck? He said, well, I asked Jake. I said, well, why didn't you come to me? I'm the guy that hit him. Why didn't you ask me? That is my neck. <laughs> I, said, I said, Jake wrestled two years after that before he had surgery. Yeah, I think God's for drugs. <laughs> They call it dope. Because I was still wrestling. Next question. Now you have a good story. Thank you so much. That's what I told Foley. I said, look, if you're going to print something, at least go to everyone and ask. But he said, who did you ask? He, said, I he spoke to the horse's head, not the horse's ass. <laughs> Yeah, right, the next. <laughs> Spit that out. That's He's got a question. That's how you do the referee shirt. Hey, why don't you shut up and get in the car? <laughs> <laughs> Put him on first row and they didn't do anything. Um, so I have really strong memories when I was a kid of being really upset when you put Jake on the shelf. And uh, that angle I, I didn't put Jake on the shelf. Jake put himself on the shelf. <laughs> I stayed up all night studying for that drug test. And I still flunked. This is a true story. We would go in and they would have tests tonight written on the board. I said, what kind of test? I didn't study for it. The, 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 angle, was, the angle was Ted put Jake out. And that lasted a year, and you had the whole bit where he stole the, where the, he stole the belt and dropped the bag and everything. And um, you don't see that anymore, like an angle running a year and, and that kind of emotional thing. <coughs> well, you don't see Tyler anymore, you just watch him from. Job or keep a job. I ain't getting back in there. There's no problem with this shit. <laughs> Hell, I, if Coco could be where I could get the Hall of Fame and I can't get this one. <laughs>
run too, but uh, that's going to the bathroom <laughs> trying to pass the test. <laughs> I do, want to, I do want to say this up front. Uh, James running from the police. Yeah. For, I want to say this for you kids out there. Um, I was given a lot of opportunity in my life, and I was given a lot uh, from God and talent wise. And uh, there's no excuse for doing the wrong thing. Okay. And uh, drugs and alcohol are the wrong thing, bottom line. But, uh, I, I got to say up front also that. When I started doing drugs and drinking, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I had a great time. It was wonderful. But the day came when it was no longer a choice to do the drug or do the alcohol. It was a have-to case. And once it becomes your sole purpose in life is to get high because there's nothing else that makes you feel good, then you're in the wrong damn boat. It's a hell of a boat to try to get out of. So you kids want to be smart. Just leave the crap alone, man. It's not worth it. Ha, ha, ha. 